Battle Reports. This is going to be Game 1 of Interplanetario 2019. So, this is my primary list, and indeed ends up being the only list that I play in all uh, six games. So I won't go over the other one, we'll just go over this one for now. You've probably all seen me play similar lists. I've been playing these lists to uh, train for Interplanetario for a long time. So, we have Sheshkin, obviously powerful. Powerful gunfighter, it's probably her, her general plan. Uh, my Shrouded EI Assault Hacker. I love Assault Hackers. I love the Shrouded. Everybody thinks they aren't very good. I think they're spectacular. I get good results with them. Speculo, Great Killer, Q Drone. Same thing, really. I often use it more as an attack piece than a reaction piece. Bit and Kiss, super efficient. Killer Hacker, Repeater. Um, kiss being a robot with a repeater means he benefits from overclock. And I do a lot of putting him out on ARO with a double adhesive launcher at people. And if they kill him, I don't even lose an order. So it's not that big of a deal. And sometimes he'll glue somebody. And sometimes it'll take them two or three orders to kill him. So I'm not... He's a great ARO piece because you don't care about him. Yeah. M-Drone, sensor package, always good. R-Drone, great flash pulse bot for defense. Again, for the overclocking. Ikadron, again, great on overclocked. Also, baggage is wonderful. Great in tournaments. Imatrons, they're solid. E-Drone, one of the uh, key pieces of many of my lists. It allows for the overclocking I was talking about. It can give your hackers advantage. You can do a lot of great things. R-Drone, Liberto Mine Layer, such a deal, such versatility. Libertos are great. Uh, Slade Drone, who will be attached to my Nexus down here. The Nexus is the Spec Ops that was allowed in this system. It doesn't totally tell you here, but my Spec Ops is a Mine Layer, an Engineer, and carries a Shock Marksman Rifle, in addition to the Combi Rifle, which will be relevant actually in the first game. Um, and it's a Nexus agent, so it gets hyperdynamics on top of all that, and starts at DS-12, also relevant. And lastly, I have Chain of Command. In a lot of these lists, this slot is kind of flexible. Sometimes it's a Russia, it's the exact same points cost, or within one on this one. Um, but it's my Caliban, Chain of Command, Protheon 3, great, submachine gun, Pulsar, D-charges, and he's a specialist. He's an outstanding profile, and the only Chain of Command in the Combined Army. Okay, so the first mission is Supplies. Um, I've always liked this mission. I'm not such a stickler for going first on it, as many people are. I'm happy defending them, letting my opponent fight up to the boxes and then open them, possibly getting stranded there, possibly, you know, allowing Sheshkin to run into their ranks and steal it and come back, something like that. Mm, relevant things are the objectives, right? One for each you have, three for having more, two for your opponent having none, and then two classifieds at one each. Um, doctors and paramedics get a bonus. As you saw on my list, I don't have any of those, so none of that, but that's fine. Okay, so this is the board. Uh, on my right is the deployment zone I end up with. This objective here is set up for Frostbrite eventually, even though it's like on day two of the event. But, so the deployment zone is that area there. On my left is where my opponent will be deploying, kind of the same thing, uh, like that. A little bit back, but you see where it is. Uh, I won the lieutenant roll and chose deployments. I like this side because this objective is a little more accessible because of the ramp. And there's an objective in this corner, like here, behind this building. Again, it's protected a lot from that side. They've got to come up and around over here to get to it. And the third one, which is more accessible from the left in this picture, um, is fine. They can have access to one without too much trouble. That's fine with me. And my opponent uh, chose to go first. And he's playing Vanilla Aleph. I don't have army lists of my opponents to show you. Uh, there was a lot going on in Interplanetario. I was not taking these pictures. A friend of mine was. so. Pictures may not be exactly everything I would have taken, but here we are. Okay, my opponent's deployment, starting on his left flank. Uh, I believe it was flash pulse spot, Myrmidon chain rifle, flash pulse spot, another flash pulse spot? Uh, no, these two are flash pulse, the one in the middle is the minesweeper. This here is a uh, Tuser with his Firebach MSV. You can see the objective he's looking at there. He's actually kind of overlooking two objectives because the other one is uh, in this corner over here, pretty much. Uh -huh. Over here, um, I know Shakti was over there, another baggage bot, and let's see if we have more on his, yeah. He's got three Omnitrons, one, two, I can't remember what the third one is, over here somewhere. He's got a proxy over here, which is the engineer. Obviously there's a proxy hidden. This is the Shukra chain of command, that's what that is there. And the other proxy, which I think is in the next picture, yeah. Blurry picture, I left it in because you can see where that proxy is. This is the dreaded Mark V, two SMGs. You can see he's kind of below Tuser here. And he's forward observer, so he's kind of threatening that objective. Um, yeah, sorry about some of the blurry pictures. 
This is my deployment, which we will get better pictures of, but this is what we have right now. Bit and kiss here. This is my far right flank. Sheshkin over there. Flash pulse bot, TR bot, slave drone, sensor bot. I believe that this is a mine. This is the Liberto. You can see one of my Imatrons there. Uh, I will go over to the next picture here. Yeah. There's one Imatron. This is the mine. This is the Liberto. Those are all the models you just saw. So underneath me. This camo token over here, kind of hidden, is the Caliban chain of command. There's also Caliban on top of this building here, which is the shrouded, threatening that objective. Mm -hmm. uh, bit and kiss. So you can see bit prone here on this thing. And kiss, like I said before, standing up, pretty good lines of fire. I'll be overclocking, so he'll be you know, double tapping on that adhesive launcher of things. And people are very scared of adhesive launchers. Probably a little more than they should be, uh, often. Okay. Um, this is my opponent placing his reserve, which is going to be the Arjuna, I believe it is, with his two ancillary bots. The Arjuna is going to be right in this area down here somewhere. I think that and that are the ancillary bots. Uh, you haven't seen in my deployment, but on my far left flank over in this corner is my Spec Ops, my E-Drone, and another R-Drone. That will be, it'll come right into the battle. Oh, this is another one of my opponent's camo tokens. It will turn out to be Dart. Yeah, this is him, his, his reserve. One, two, I guess three. And my reserve is my Speculo Killer, who will go right behind Tuser, right about there. Uh, Tuser's forward deployed, so the Speculo does not have to roll, just sets down right behind him. Remember, my opponent is going first, though. And this is actually already into my opponent's first turn. This camo token is Dart moving around. My camo token here holds. Um, there's a line of fire down there, I believe, from another flash pulse bot. Or maybe it's from under the staircase like that. See it there. Yeah, it's behind that building. And so we get a discover, we get some holding, fighting this flash pulse bot over here. I guess to back up just for a second, I did spend a command token taking two orders, and now he's running up his right flank, my left flank with dart. That's what's going on in these pictures. Um, this is where dart gets to right there before she ends up being discovered and or revealing herself. I believe she revealed herself to shoot uh, SMG here, but I had held. So we get double flash pulse from there, and my Caliban chain of command, who's almost directly under the shrouded here, not quite, but in that area, also decides to reveal and shoot his SMG over there. This is kind of a dangerous play, because I don't want to lose my chain of command right away. But I've had Dart do tremendous amounts of damage to my army before. So I think that delaying her is worth the revealing of my chain of command. It does not work out, and the Caliban is killed. I believe the Flash Pulse bot survives and fought fails his guts to go around the corner here. And then with his next order, he walks behind it and then puts it unconscious. Um, yeah, here you can see Dart over here walking around behind. Um, and then, uh, I don't remember the order. This is about a week ago now, so bear with me a little bit. This drone eventually goes unconscious, as you'll see in a moment. And there's Dart there. This is a mine over here laid by my mine layer, Spec Ops right here, which I believe does put a wound on Dart. So this is sort of where the turn ends up. The drone is here. It's failed the guts test around the corner. And Dart is over here in no wound in cap because of the mine that went off on her. She has killed my uh, Caliban over there, and I do believe that was it. On the other side of the board, this is pretty much his group two orders. Tuser turns around and does a discover, which he fails, so I don't do anything, just let him waste his orders. The Myrmidon then climbs up the building, which takes him two orders, and then throws a smoke grenade over here and tries an intuitive attack, and all, the, all that stuff fails. So the Speculo is just standing there doing nothing, but sucking up a lot of orders. Okay, this is uh, the beginning of my turn one. My Spec Ops peeks around the corner to shoot at Dark, just like that. Um, this is where I said it was relevant. I have a combi rifle as well as my shock, shock marksman rifle. Combi rifle is better against Dart because she has bioimmunity, so she can use her BTS-3 as opposed to her armor. Additionally, at this range, the, sh the shock marksman will be minus 3. Combi rifle is plus 3. However, none of that helps me. He throws an EM grenade. You can see the isolated token over here. He isolates the Spec Ops, but the E-Drone makes the save against it. That's why I threw it, because the template hits both like that. So, I'm still determined to kill Dart, so there's, uh, there's no way I'm going to let her stay there. And the E-Drone peeks around the corner there over the uh, prone uh, Spec Ops there and back. But I lose that face-to-face -to, -face to the Tactical Bow, and the E-Drone goes unconscious as well. Then, I realize a much better course of attack that I probably should have done first. 
my Q drone is able to shift around over here to get line of fire kind of from that table edge onto what I believe is dart right there. So the Q drone does that, kills dart in one. Obviously should have done that first. Uh, part of the reason I didn't is I didn't really look carefully. Another part is I wanted to finish dart off with group two orders before I started spending group one orders so they would have more, more to do. Um, when the Q drone comes out to kill dart, he reveals his proxy sniper is here. Uh, I believe it's prone though. Uh, I don't remember if it started prone, maybe it took a hit and went prone, but it fires its Q drone and I either threw one die at it or I ignored it, I don't remember which. Um, but the Q drone survived and killed Dart and then the proxy is just right here. So the Shrouded, you know, he figures he's going to take care of that. He scoots up to not in line of fire of the proxy and lays a mine. So we get a mine right here. Shrouded still prone over here. So next order, Shrouded peeks around to see the proxy and then peeks back to where he is. Proxy decides to nano pulse. Um, questionable decision, right? He has a decent chance of killing the Shrouded with that, but I do have an auto med kit. I can come back. He will probably die to the mine. Uh, based on that information, I choose to dodge with the Shrouded. I fail the dodge. Great, right? But I, I make the BTS save. And the proxy is indeed killed by the mine, which is shock to avoid her no wound in cap. So now I've got my Shrouded up here near, near this objective, but out of camo. Yeah, there's the proxy gone. Shroud gone, or Shroud is still there, mine gone. Okay, this is me checking line of fire from stuff in the middle of the board to see what Tusser can see, because I believe he is standing. Um, I decide, oh no, he's prone, but I'm checking his line of fires for when he stands up. And I figure I can get my Q drone out here without him seeing once he stands up. That's what I'm checking there. This is on my right hand side where Sheshkin can peek out to here where she will see the Mark V in, in cover over here, but I'll see the Mark V. So Sheshkin runs out there, don't want him to be able to just walk out and get this objective. I get flash pulsed and fall back a little bit with guts and then run around the corner. Um, and here we are, the Q drone as I told you, moved up to there. You can see my R drone is now unconscious over here. Um, don't remember what put it unconscious. It may have been dark at the end of her turn, may not have been, I don't totally recall. And I think that's pretty much all I did. Here you can see Sheshkin again behind this corner up here. Um, okay. That's Here's my opponent uh, checking out what's going on. Okay, so I believe we're up to my opponent's second turn now. He's got a cam token over here, which is going to come out here and do stuff. It turns out to be a Liberto. Shock D is going to come around over here and do some fighting. We'll get to that momentarily. More stuff is going to happen on top of the roof, though none of that is uh, terribly constructive. There's a little bit more uh, discovering going on. Speculo never does anything. They never make a discover roll on her. Um, oh, here you can see his uh, Arjuna, again, I believe it is, is unconscious. One of the last things my Q drone did in its turn was shoot over there and put him unconscious. My Q drone is not upgraded. If you'll remember, my E drone was uh, put unconscious by Dart, so I don't have um, any uh, support wear up at the moment. Here's my opponent checking those lines of fire again over there. Uh, Tusser is going to walk over and try to shoot my Icadron, excuse me, the baggage guy. But Tusser gets blinded doing so. Then his Liberto comes over. He can see my Q drone. He gets in a little firefight with it. Uh, he goes dogged on the first one. And then, uh, yeah, here he's running out again. And he, uh, that's where he goes dogged. Then he runs out and he gets a crit and puts the, the Q drone unconscious. Back to, back to this picture here. This is, down here you see uh, Shakti moving up. She moves up and I believe he second moves and gets within eight of the shrouded up here. Though, of course, we're not sure. We're not pre-measure, right? But I go for the EI program STOP, which is a assault hacking device program, uh, terribly underused. Damage 16, breaker, but you immobilize one for two turns. He, he fails that check um, and does indeed get immobilized for two turns. He then goes for a reset, and I now go for an oblivion. Um, I'm successful, and she becomes isolated, but she is a veteran. I didn't know this, and my opponent did give me a courtesy list, so I did, really didn't know that. And this will come up in a moment later when he tries to do some other things because she should not be isolated, right? Her hacking device should still work. She should still be able to do things because, you know, veteran ignores that. Please bring courtesy lists, everybody. Nobody in this event brought a courtesy list except for one opponent, which I'll get to, you know, when we eventually get there. But I think courtesy lists should be 100% mandatory in all games. Okay, sorry for the rant. Moving on. Now you can see her immobilized one token. And the Liberto, who's fighting with the Q drone down there. Uh, and there you can see Shakti's isolated token, right there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, yeah, more smoke grenades and nothing going on on top of the hill as they try to deal with the, the Speculo, and there's a blind token for Tusser where he tried to engage the Icadron. And there's the Liberto running out, here's his known in cap marker, and uh, killing my Qdron. This is my Liberto here, I don't do anything because I don't want to reveal yet. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where that ended, in. that was the end of that turn. Okay, so this is the beginning of my turn two. Uh, you notice there's no longer an isolated token next to my Spec Ops, who's an Engineer. So she fixes herself. It's really important to make that roll, because I can't spend more orders on her to fix herself again. But she does pass it, and then she then wanders over and also fixes the um, E-Drone there. And with that second order, which brings the uh, Slave Drone back online, I've been repaired with the first one, the Slave Drone is also moving out towards the Q-Drone. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture of the center of the board. Um, what's going on here is I believe the Shrouded is moving up. No, we're checking lines of fire. My finger there, possibly my opponents. Uh, we're checking lines of fire for when Sheshkin moves up what she can see. Because what I want to do is kill the Mark V. So Sheshkin runs up there. She can still uh, kill the Mark V. Four dice on 18s because uh, I'm in good range, kind of far away from him. Yeah, and the Mark V dies. Um, and then Sheshkin kind of backs off. That's what you're seeing there. She kills that and she kind of runs away into this corner to hide. Uh, here's the Shrouded. And here's where it becomes relevant about uh, Shakti being not isolated, even though we played her as, because now that one of us knew. So the Shrouded walks over to here. My opponent declares uh, a Sucker Punch. Uh, I tell him that A, he can't because I have Stealth, and I haven't you know triggered it yet. And B, his hacking device is turned off because he's isolated. Um, oh, also he was immobilized, I'm sorry. He declared a Reset, not a Sucker Punch. Uh, I told him he could, could not do those. And... He didn't think I was correct. We had to call the judge. We looked up isolated, and again, I'm getting out of order here. I then go to open the box, which breaks my stealth. He then declares sucker punch. We tell him he's isolated, he can't, and then he declares reset, which he can, and then he fails that. So if he had not been isolated, I would have moved to there. Exactly the same thing would have happened. He would have gone for the reset, because that's all he can do. I would have opened the box, and then I can walk away using stealth again. So I'd be safe for my turn. On his turn, he can still attack me with his hacking device. But, so it was relevant. It would not have changed this interaction uh, as much as it could have. Here's us looking up the rule, because he didn't think the isolated stopped his hacking device, as we all know it does. Oh, one second. Judges, judges were all in these yellow shirts. They did an excellent job of answering rules questions and listening to both players. And yeah, overall, very happy with the judging in this event. Okay, so there's a Shrouded wandering away with his thing. He wanders a little farther back, and he leaves a landmine, just in case somebody like Chucky tries to climb up the building or something like that. Um, not a good idea for her to do it, because I'd be hacking her the whole way. But if anybody tries to climb, he's climb, he's defended by a mine. There. All right, now we're moving into my opponent's third turn. He's not in loss of lieutenant, even though Shakti is isolated for our game, because uh, he has this chain of command Shukra. Chain of command Shukra runs out, He's trying to get to this objective. He runs out. Sheshkin is right behind this wall right here, in that, looking down that alley. We have a little bit of a firefight. He puts a wound on Sheshkin, and then he gets killed by the um, by the Red Fury. Would have been really bad if Sheshkin had died there, because my chain of command was down, and while I had one box, that's all I would have gotten for the game. And if he had killed her and survived, he would have gotten over and got a box, and I don't know if I would have been able to uh, recover that into a victory. Two, sir. Did you know Tusser has Climbing Plus? I didn't. Yeah, Tusser Climbing Plus down the wall like that. Again, he's trying to see Sheshkin for all the reasons I just said. He can't quite, we determine, but he does destroy the Icadron, which is down here. Mm -hmm. This is... Let me take a picture of here. Uh, Shrouded backed off. Oh, yeah, Shakti. She has moved over to this corner, so she's like guarding this area here. My Liberto is there. I think I did reveal to take a shot. Uh, I might have waited till my turn, but there ends up being a firefight between them there, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Sheshkin moving up just to get some kills. Um, I'm trying to clear the way for my Q-Drone, or for my M-Drone, that's what I'm doing. So she comes up, she kills a few things that were uh, possibly looking at the M-Drone. Um, yeah, here's Shakti over here, she's got a wound marker on her now. She's this big firefight between her and the, and the Liberto. And then when the Liberator is not able to finish it, the Q-Drone comes around the corner over here, and it's obviously been repaired by now, 
and fires down and is eventually able to put Shakti unconscious. Which clears the M drone, which is now here. It is run up to the center, grab the objective, runs back around like that, where there's pretty much nobody watching it anymore, to kind of get below the shrouded here, where it is within eight of the enemy uh, HVT. At which point I'm able to identity check, because you can do it with the, within your sensor area, as well as having the visors here, which I of course don't have. Um, and I believe this is where the game ends. Sheshkin's wounded there, M-Drone's there, Shrouded is there, so I have two of the boxes. Q-Drone's down there, it, is, it has been revived, you can see the Slave Drone next to it there. Um, yeah, so here's our mission and our breakdown. I have two boxes, I have more boxes, my opponent has none. I have uh, one classified, and I'm securing the enemy HVT, which leads us to a 9-0 victory for the combined army. The game was fairly straightforward, um, not a lot of heavy decision making. Once, once I killed Dart and was able to get a lot of freedom movement over there. Of course, the hacking battle, it was a, the Shrouded versus Shakti, is not in a great position to win that battle. My opponent made a mistake by moving into my zone with his second move. And then I was able to immobilize him, and that really set up the whole structure over there for the Shrouder to get that objective and get away with it. Uh, again, the program uh, stop from the EI is what enabled that too. It could damage 16 breaker and immobilize for two turns. Usually you carbonite to get the plus three on the thing. The carbonite's only immobilized for one turn. So if she was immediately active, I couldn't get that objective without you know, dealing with the killer hacker first. And he's not terribly well suited to do that. Anyway, that's all for the first battle. Uh, we'll get the other ones done sooner or later, but we're starting out strong. Game 1, 9-0 for the Combined Army. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy.